Hello everyone, welcome back to The Budget Sportsman. Thank you so much for joining me on today's video where we're gonna be taking a look at the security camera turned trail camera. This is the Reolink Go PT Plus. The PT stands for pan tilt and we'll mention that more in a moment. I wanted to mention this video is made possible by a company called Flexiboom. Flexiboom is a company that offers cellular data plans and they offer it for things like uh, cell cameras and security cameras and those sorts of things. They reached out to me and asked me if I'd be interested in looking at this camera and they would provide the cell plan for my testing. So this, I just wanted to make it clear, this video is made possible by Flexiboom. Now on this video, I wanna give you a list of pros and cons, the things I really love about this camera and there are a number and a couple of things that I don't think are super ideal, especially if you're using it as a trail camera. But before I do, I wanted to mention the price. This setup, the Go, the Reolink Go PT Plus with the solar panel, it's gonna come in right now at the time of this recording at $279 on Amazon. So it's pretty expensive, more than I would typically personally spend on a trail camera. On the other hand, this has a lot of features that the typical trail camera just does not have. And so you'll have to watch the video and see whether you think it's worth it. Now, another thing I wanted to mention is that uh, the plans from Flexiboom, of course, this camera can be used with any number of service providers. I'm just gonna mention Flexiboom because they are the ones that made this possible. Uh, their plans, uh, are about $8 a month if you purchase by the year. So it's $100 a year or about $8.33 per month. And that gives you two gigs of data per month, which should be plenty, at least in my experience so far, has been plenty uh, for the amount of data that I've been using each month on this camera. They do have plans that are uh, by the month. They would tend to be, I think, around $11 per month, or you can get by three months or six months. And each one is kind of rated a little bit differently. The cheapest is obviously if you get it by the year. So let's dive into the pros and cons list of this camera, starting with the pros. My very first one is that this is a cell camera that sends videos directly to your phone. Now, I know this is not the only camera out there that will send videos, but most of the cell cameras that I've played, in fact, all of the cell cameras that I've ever played with, only send photos, and some of them not even that great of quality photos. So I've really been enjoying getting videos from a cell camera. And I find that they're actually pretty good quality even over the cell network. Now from the app, when you hit play on a video, you can choose different quality settings. And normally I find that the lowest quality is sufficient if the animal, especially the deer, is fairly close to the camera. Now, if I'm trying to really get detail on a buck or maybe an animal is a little bit further away from the camera where I want a little bit more detail, you can click that over into a higher quality setting and you're gonna get a really nice image, but it will use more of that data from your monthly plan. This camera does have a built-in SD card, so you can always go out, get the SD card, and bring it back and have that full resolution, high quality video to check on your computer or a larger device. But I found so far that the quality that comes to my phone is pretty good. I've really been enjoying it. Now, the next thing I really love about this camera is that you can actually watch live. If you get a notification on your phone that there's activity in front of your camera, you can open that and you can actually watch a live stream for as long as you want to. Now keep in mind, you are using your data, but at that point, there might be a deer in front of the camera, and instead of getting a 10 second clip or a 15 second clip, you can actually sit there and live watch the activity in front of your camera. I found that to be super, super cool. Now the next thing I love about this camera is the pan and tilt feature. From your phone, you can open it up, open the connection, and you can move the camera around. I'm gonna show you right now, you can see the live stream from the camera is pointing at that camera. And as I move this, you can watch, and you can see that this thing moves, and then the camera moves. There's a slight delay between the camera moving and the video coming back to my phone, but I can move it all around. I can move it up and down. Oops, I'm up as high as it goes. That's why it's not wanting to go up anymore. But I can come down. Just like that, you can see my messy office as I'm making this video. But this is really awesome, especially given the fact that I just mentioned that you can watch videos live. So there might be a deer in front of your camera and it passes off to the side. You can be watching live and actually control the camera and follow where that deer movement is going. It really helps to figure out the direction that deer are moving to or coming from. Now the next thing I love about this camera is that you have a constant connection to the camera from your app. What do I mean by that? Well. I've had some cell cameras in the past that the only time they would connect to the server or as a result connect to my phone is when they took a photo and went to upload that photo. But if that camera stopped communicating with the server for some reason, there was really no way for me to initiate the connection from my end on my cell phone. With this camera, that's not the case. 
At any moment, I can open the app, I can click on the camera, and it will open the live preview. I can check on the battery status, and I can just make sure that everything is working okay. Now, another thing I love about this camera that should be really obvious is the solar panel. I got this camera, I got it out of the box, and the battery right out of the box was about 36%. I never plugged it in, never charged it. I just took it out, put it in a tree in the woods, and gradually over time, this battery worked its way up to 100%. Now, initially, it was in a place where it wasn't getting a lot of sun, and it charged, but very slowly, maybe 1% per day. Later on, as leaves started coming off the trees, and I actually moved it to a different location where there's a little bit more sun, it charged quite rapidly. Either way, it always kept up or gained in its battery capacity. That's awesome because my least favorite thing about running trail cameras is buying batteries. Now, the last thing that I want to mention about this camera on the pro side is that you can use any cellular provider that you want. A lot of the big name cell cam manufacturers, you're kind of locked into their plan. So you get a plan through the cell cam manufacturer and then they deal with the cellular plan. Here, that's not the case. Real Link does not provide a plan. Real Link doesn't provide any kind of service in that way. You just have to bring your own cellular provider to the camera, which is really awesome. I already mentioned that uh, Flexiboom is the one that provided the cell service for my testing of this video. But you can do your own research, and there are a number of companies out there that do provide cellular service, which is really awesome. So you can shop around, you can find the best price, you can find the best uh, you know, data plan that works in your area. I do want to mention Flexiboom does offer um, SIM cards that work for different carriers. So they have AT&T, T-Mobile, Verizon, etc. And they'll give you the one that works best in your particular area. Now at this point, I've given you quite a few things that I really do enjoy about this camera and I have been enjoying using it for the last couple of months. However, there are some drawbacks that are significant that you may want to be aware of. Now the first one is kind of simple, but I'm just gonna throw it out here. You can probably see that I have the camera and the uh, solar panel mounted to a board. And that's because there's really no way that this comes to easily mount it to a tree like a typical trail camera. The camera itself does have a base and comes with a small strap that would probably work to mount it to a tree without screwing it to the tree, but the solar panel does not. The solar panel is only comes with a mount that would be mounted by screws. And I didn't want to be screwing this into a tree all the time, so I opted to screw it to a scrap piece of wood I had laying around and then just use a ratchet strap to strap that wood to the tree. And it's worked out quite well. You just have to be prepared to do a little bit of DIY on the mounting solution. Now, the next issue that I have with this camera is a little bit bigger, and that issue is that the camera is white. Now, initially, I didn't expect that to be a huge issue, but over a couple months of testing, I felt that deer spooked by this camera a lot more frequently than they would with the typical camouflage trail camera. Now, it may just be due to the size, but I'm thinking it's probably due to the white nature. Even myself, when I walk through the woods, I can see it from quite a distance away. It's big, it's white, and I noticed that deer often were spooked by this camera. Now, my friend Dave over at The Hunting Farmer, he's reviewed this trail camera before, and he's actually done a DIY paint solution on it to camouflage the trail camera. I've also noticed recently that Amazon and some other places are selling cameras very similar to this one, but that are already come camouflaged. And so if you're interested in this style of camera, it may be worth looking around and seeing what else you can find. Now, the next issue that I have with this camera is that it doesn't automatically download the videos to your phone. Now, I realize that could be a con if it did that because it would take a lot of storage space on your phone. But my issue is that once I watch a video, I wish it would store that video on the phone. If I wanna watch the video more than once, it uses the data connection every single time and uses more and more of my data. In fact, even if I watch that video halfway through and I go back to the beginning, it seems to reload and continue to use that data even though I just watched the video. Now there is a way to download the video, but you have to do that manually. That works well, I don't have any complaints with that, but I just found that if I wanna scroll back through videos, maybe from last week, what all went through, and I'm scrolling through videos that maybe I've already watched, I'm using my data connection all over again. So that's a little bit of a con. Now my final con is probably the biggest. There are times that I've had really inconsistent connection with the camera. There were times I'd try to play a video and it would take forever to load even on low quality. There were times that it would just say failed to load or connection failed. And I don't really know what's causing the problem. I've moved the camera around to different locations. It seems to work fine out on my front porch at my house with pretty good results, but I get it out into the woods and in certain locations that where maybe the cell phone signal is not as strong, and that has seemed to be an issue, but it's weird because some days it works great and some days it doesn't. Uh, Flexiboom actually sent me a second SIM card with a different carrier to see if that would help. It seemed like maybe it helped a little bit, but I've still had issues. Even today, 
in opening up the app to do this video, it said failed connection. So I don't know if it's an issue of just um, the camera. I don't know if it's an issue with the FlexiBoom service. I don't know if it's an issue with my local cell phone towers. I'm not trying to point fingers at anybody, but it has definitely been the biggest issue for me that has taken my enjoyment of using this camera down a notch. Now there are times that it works great and I love it. And then there are times that I really want to see that video and it just will not load. So what's my conclusion on the Reolink Go PT Plus? Well, it is an expensive camera, but it is full featured. And it's also interesting to note that the price of the monthly plan is pretty reasonable considering I've got other cameras that charge about $8 a month for a limited number of photos, not even videos. So the fact that you're getting video cell camera at an $8 a month rate is pretty reasonable once you get past the initial investment of a fairly expensive camera. Again, it is full featured. You could use this for a security camera or trail camera. It's got the solar panel, got the pan tilt. I forgot to mention, it actually is a feature where you can use your phone to talk through the camera and the animal or person standing in front of your camera could hear you. Probably wouldn't want to do that with deer, but maybe in your situation, you'd want to use it that way. It is pretty full featured if you're aware of the drawbacks. Personally, I've really been enjoying using the camera the last couple months. I'd encourage you to do your research if there might be another camera that's already camouflaged that has some of the same features. Hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think of this camera down in the comments. And until next time, remember to get off YouTube and get outdoors into God's great creation.